Hey everyone, in this AP Chem series video, we're going to take a look at alloys. First, remember that we've seen lots of different types of solids so far, like molecular solids, ionic solids, metallic solids, and covalent network solids. Metallic solids can create a unique type of mixture called an alloy, and in this video we'll take a closer look at exactly what that is and some of the different types. I'll start by re-emphasizing that alloys are really just metallic solids, and like other metallic solids, you'll see metal cations like these sodium cations being attracted via metallic bonds. With alloys, however, you'll see that metals aren't always pure samples. Instead of having only sodium cations in this solid structure, you might also have some magnesium cations mixed in. This sample is now referred to as an alloy of sodium and magnesium and gives us our alloys definition. They are mixtures or solutions of different types of metals. You'll see most alloys are different metals mixed together, but some are also combinations of metals mixed with non-metallic elements also. Even if you've got non-metals mixed in, the valence electrons remain delocalized so the bonding remains metallic. Make sure to take some time and write down these key ideas. There's two main categories of alloys that you have to know for AP chemistry. The first are called interstitial alloys, and these form between atoms of different radii. In the model shown here to the right, you can see the larger atoms shown in gray and the smaller atoms shown in green. In these alloys, the smaller ones fit into the interstitial spaces between the larger atoms and hence the label interstitial alloys. There's also substitution alloys that form between atoms of similar radii, like you can see in the model to the left. If the atoms are of similar size, one simply substitutes for the other in the lattice. Make sure you take some time and write down these key ideas as well. The best example of an interstitial alloy and most common is steel. Steel is made of iron atoms metallically bonded, and in between the iron atoms in those interstitial spaces, you'll find the smaller carbon atoms. One of the things that makes steel so important is how these carbon atoms affect the malleability of the metal. If I bring back my hammer and apply some pressure to one of these rows, you can see how the carbon atoms, they sort of get in the way and make it harder for these rows to realign and change shape. Interstitial alloys tend to be less malleable. It also makes them harder, sometimes more brittle as well. Take some time and write down that key idea. Substitution alloys don't really have a predictable effect on the properties of the metal, but we should talk about one common example known as brass. Brass is made of a mixture of copper and zinc atoms shown here with brown and pink circles. You could predict that copper and zinc would form a substitution alloy as opposed to an interstitial alloy by comparing their sizes. Here's the periodic table symbols for copper and zinc. These would also allow me to write electron configurations for these two atoms. If you did that, and they're already shown here, you'd see that both copper and zinc have electrons that go to the fourth energy level. That means their sizes are gonna be relatively similar, which is what tells me they form a substitution alloy rather than an interstitial. That also concludes this video on alloys. Thanks a lot for watching, and here is a brief summary.